Ah! Ah! Robert family, weekend is here, last weekend of 2019, last weekend of the decade, and we're here, and we have awards, we have our award celebration, we have the best of 2019, John Paul and myself want to say hi to all of you, and like always, thank you for being right here, thank you for being a member of the Road Break family. So Jean Paul and I have a, have a discussion, like four hour long discussion of you know every single promotion, what was good, what was bad, and we also came up with like a set of categories, and we're just gonna talk about the winners of 2019. So Jean Paul, start us off. Uh, what is our first category? Well, the first category we have on the list of road break, like the list of Jericho, we have our own list the right here. So. Of road break. Yep. So we have the male superstar of the year. So I had to go with Adam Cole and just I feel he was an obvious choice for a lot of people, but he was an obvious choice for a reason. Just everything he's done, you know, he's the one who made NXT like they were he like him being the champion you can have NXT be on national TV and like, you're not like ashamed to be like, Oh, we're like a small indie promotion. Only 500 people are in our crowd, you know, because he is a champion who like elevates that promotion and makes it like so much le legit. Cause he's, you know, his just in ring work and everything that he does and all his matches, you know, and just like his heel persona and just like everything, you yeah. know, I will say, yeah, Adam Cole probably is the, the wrestler or the worker that did the most work in the WWE in 2019. Mm -hmm. The guy had an amazing amount of matches that there were at least four stars. You know, Matt oh, Riddle, yeah. the whole rivalry with Gargano. You know, he had but Tommaso Ciampa, they're taunting that rivalry once again. Mm -hmm. He had um, oh, um, an immense amount of matches, the War Games match. Where he oh, also yeah, and, and, and that's the thing too. All those matches, they weren't like He's not a guy who will go in there and win a squash match. These are, you know, 15, 20 minute, like crazy, you know, matches that like just the amount of, like you said, work that he's done and like the stress and damage he did to his body this year alone. He deserves oh, yeah. it. Workload, you know, we went yeah. to SmackDown, the match with Daniel Bryan, the match mm -hmm. in Survivor Series with Pete Dunne, uh, and then the match that he just had with Finn Balor. You could see that this guy has had the best year of his career. And also, like, the, the the amount of opponents, you know, Finn Balor. Again, but, you know, Velveteen Dream. Yeah, he and had, you know, Matt Riddle, Gargano. All of them, Pete Dunne. All the major guys have had, you know, a match with him. Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And like you said, how many, how many of those matches were all legit? Like, four-star minimum. Yes. It's not like he goes in there and does a match and it's like, hey, Adam Cole wrestled, but who cares? Like, all his matches, you know, you want to see. Because he's yeah. going against all these high-profile guys, like you exactly. named. All those guys are, you know, main roster, like mm -hmm. main star guys. Main event players yeah, main, in, yeah, any exactly. promotion. in any promotion. These guys will be leading the promotion. And he had matches with all of them. And like you said, yeah, there were not squash beat, matches. Yeah. And most of the time, he beat them. Yep. So Adam Cole, to me, is the MVP of 2019 for Jean Paul Eck. Mm -hmm. I think that his year has been, I don't think he can ever have a better year. No. And I'm sorry, but if he goes to the main roster, we will not be talking about Adam Cole in the same manner that we've been talking about him on NXT. NXT became even bigger and more, you know, it got to more households. It became more household name now, more mainstream because of also the Adam Cole. Yeah, that's yeah. A, and just every like him leading Undisputed Era and that whole faction. That's the thing, like factions is what make wrestling cool. Back in the day, you know, kids did the DX chop or they had the NWO t-shirts because being in like a faction and a group was cool. So Undisputed Era, they're like a group, you know, people, you know, that they latch on to that. They buy the merch, they do the hand, you know, the gestures and it's legit. Exactly. A and he's the was the leader of all that. And so. He is the leader. Yeah. And then, and of course, he, he was the champion with NXT going into yep. uh, USA two hours leaving the WWE Network, like you said, kind of be leaving that perception of like an indie promotion or like mm -hmm. a smaller promotion now going mainstream to yep. everybody. And he is the one that has been able to carry the show to a point that like they've been able to 
a bit AEW two weeks or three weeks out of all mm-hmm. this whole 12 week, 13 week run that they had. Well, one thing that I thought when you was talking about being AEW that I thought was like st- funny but also stupid was Brian Alvarez posted the ratings for this week and it was like 83 or like 831,000 people watched NXT and it said zero for AEW. Oh. Like, so then people were like trolling in the comments and they're like, oh my God, like no AEW's finished. Nobody watched AEW this week. Like this promotion's canceled. Then it's like, why would you even post AEW as zero? Why wouldn't you just say this is how many people watch? Because they didn't have a show. Exactly. Like I they didn't like, even know, you yeah. know, like they, and they just didn't even N- have just a say, show. Just say NXT, 831,000. And then that's it. Exactly. And you can just yeah. be like, for the ones that don't get it, AEW yeah, he, did not yeah. have a show this week. Yeah. So come on, guys. So that's the part I don't understand. And that's the part that, like, Brian Alvarez, I think he did the wrong thing by doing oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. AEW is done. Of course it's yeah. done. There's no show. Yeah. So any anything anything else on Adam Cole? You know, no, I was going to say. This that's your pick. Day. Yeah, I was going to say. And as good as we said he is, you had a different pick. Who was it? Tell My us. pick. For the best male superstar of 2019 is brrr, drum roll, Le Champion Chris Jericho. This guy has had one of the best years of his career, being almost 50 years old, and he was able to put great matches in with the likes of uh, Kenny Omega, Adam Handman Page, Darby Allen. He did uh, also Cody Rhodes. This guy and all this, the amount of work that he's done is so great, and to be able to reinvent himself, to be yeah, able and who to and who who did he wrestle in uh, New Japan? Was that Naito? Or? It was uh, it was Naito. It was Naito yeah. in Wrestle Kingdom for the yeah. uh, Intercontinental Championship that he was holding at that time. So yeah, that's what I mean. So as champion. yeah, and so, he changed the, the gimmick. I don't, I've, I've the gimmick has a name. I forget where he has the like pain oh, the, the pain ma- the pain the maker. Pain maker. There you yeah. go. Pain maker. Yeah, 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 like that new gimmick and stuff. He reinvented himself, like you said, legit. And you know, at fifty years old, he like he's I don't. You can't argue with that. And then the, everything he did then with AEW, and that's what I mean. Like uh, AEW chooses him as the main guy because remember that the match at Double or Nothing was supposed to be Pac and Adam Handman Page. But because Pac was having some issues with his visa, he wasn't able to come to the States. So they had to redo the whole thing. And then Jericho becomes the number one contender with Adam Handman Page all out. When they okay, crowned him. But they see, don't I, don't, I, I don't know if I believe that storyline because ma- they had to have known. If those two guys were in your championship match and either of them would be the AEW champion, they would have been one of those transitional champions and then Jericho would have had to take it immediately because this promotion, I'm sorry, as good as AEW is, you need to have Jericho be your number one guy until you start to get that, you know, the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks become a household name. So people latch on to them yes. and be like, oh, like the AEW, until AEW gets un- their own identity, they need to hold on to Jericho because without Jericho, they wouldn't be doing as good as they were. Yeah, well, imagine this, like like you said, Chris Jericho being a household name like he is, not mm-hmm. only for the wrestling, also for Fozzie, also for all the stuff that he does. He mm-hmm. reinvents himself, and, and the, the best decision that Cody, everybody else in the AEW uh, creative, they put the title on him, that gave the title and the promotion so much legitimacy. And this guy reinvents himself because he doesn't live out of his name only, but he creates the bubbly. He creates mm-hmm. the champion. He creates the lexicon of the champion. Like yeah, the inner, yeah, the, in, the, the inner. Well, the, well, yeah, the lexicon. Inner-serve. The lexicon is kind of like a bullshit copy of the list. So yeah. I don't know how creative that was, but I mean, he probably is the one who came up with the list. So it is technically his idea, but that's what I mean. Like he's just so, and he's so charismatic. Like everything he comes up with, we just latch onto, and it's not because yes. oh, we're just Jericho marks. It's like yeah, that might be true, but also because he's everything he says is legit. Because he's not. Spe- he's not. Yeah, he's not out here spewing bullshit. He's telling yeah. the truth. Exactly, and that's one of the reasons that, to me, like this is the you know, he's the best wrestler of 2019, yeah. just because the promo work only. The mm-hmm. promos with Cody Rhodes, they were absolutely great, wasn't they? Weren't they? Exactly, and just yeah, and like his things with MJF, and just like everything was, it was everything. just so good. Yeah, like and especially remember the one the one line that he had when he said, "Oh, when they were calling Jack Swagger 
uh, Jake Hager, Jack Swagger, uh -huh. and everything is like, oh, that was uh, the awful idea from Stupid Created of three years yeah. ago. See, like he was able to exactly. come up with that, a little bit of the bubbly, you know, like all of those things. And the fact that like he remains current despite of like the style that he has in his matches now because the pace is a little slow, but he can still deliver a great amount of but, good yeah, rest. But that's the thing, like, and we said though, despite all that stuff being slower, older, not in the best shape, he's proven that despite all that, he's still the sole reason that AEW is as successful as it is because that bubbly boom sold how much? All his t-shirts, every time he comes up with a new design, they sell out instantly. Why? Because it's Chris Jericho. Yeah. If, if you know, somebody else would have come out with a shirt, even like a Kenny Omega, that probably doesn't sell out instantly. No. The but Young Bucks, they or... probably don't sell out instantly, but Jericho, boom. That first stock that they get is is done. And, and something that, for example, you said to me before, and I really like that, is like, how cool it is it is it that you come out to your own song? You yeah. sing your own yeah, thing, like, yeah, that's badass. and people sing it back, yep. you know, with Judas from Fozzy. So that's why Jericho, it's legit. Has, yeah, it's legit. It's like Jericho, everything he does is like he he says it the best way. Jericho himself says it. I have the Midas touch. Everything I touch becomes gold. You know, promo work, in ring ability. I mean, I'm not a big the fan cruise, of the, the cruise the, of Jericho. Cruise of Jericho. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Judas effect. Which I don't know. I, he, he, did he, not to interrupt you, but did he have one cruise already or no? He had a few. He's been having this for a oh, few okay, years. Okay, okay. I was going to say, yeah, but, not to, yeah, to make sure it actually keeps, happened in this year. But he keeps improving them. Yeah. You know, he has like the first cruise. I think he had only the Fuzzy, the show. Now mm -hmm. he has wrestling. Now the last one, he had some uh, some New Japan wrestlings. Wrestlers yeah. in there, and now he's gonna have some AEW wrestlers. Yeah, it's actually gonna have storyline. And I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Like they might record an episode during yeah. the cruise. Yeah. Or, or some segments will be recorded there. So he might also remember the episode, um, the episode of uh, AEW where he was trolling Cody Rose's uh, promo. Yeah, remember that was, that was so legit. Soul Train Jones. That was so funny. Yeah. Virgil. So and a uh, Virgil and and their grandma was like, oh, I hope that. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, I hope Chris beats the shit out of Cody. Yeah. But the I one, mean, yeah, the one thing back to what you were saying, the Judas effect. Judas effect shit is is not a legit move. I'm no. not in love with it. And I mean, not as a fi not as a finisher, as a setup, uh, like a signature. A I'll signature be like, okay. Fine, but you know, even he has the ability to do that. Come up with new finishers. I mean, well, I mean, we don't agree with it, but at the same time, he still is able to come up with stuff. Remain himself fresh. He mm -hmm. still has enough creativity to come up with newer things that you know other wrestlers will not able to do at the age that he's in. And you know, for example, once and I'm just gonna like finish my thought with this. The whole thing that he used the list. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna want to fight Diamond Dallas Page, Page Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpio exactly. Star. He's yeah, just so he's, well. Yeah, he's so funny. That's what I mean. He's so funny, charismatic, creative. Like exactly. everything he like. He's like you said, the Midas touch. He's like, and oh, I'm, example, I'm gonna. Yeah, like, go ahead. He hasn't had a bad segment yet on AEW. It's not like he that's came right. out. And we're like, oh man, like really, Jericho? Like he was always legit. Yeah, like last time we saw him, it was Jungle Boy. It was a good match. It did mm -hmm. what it was supposed to do. And like I said, I wanted to finish the thought saying that you know this thing, this promo that he did with the list. He was back to the WCW days. He did the same thing with Dean Malenko. Because yep. he said, the Dean Malenko, holds. I'm the man of a thousand holes. Arm drag. You know, so play yep. the arm drag. So for me, the winner of the best male award is Le Champion, Chris Jericho. So yep, moving it, along, John Paul, what's our next category? Then next category, we have the female of the year. And this we actually have a tie on for our number one. But we do have some... Some runner up, some contenders. <laughs> so, like, one, like, you know, just Becky Lynch, you know, ever, the run she's been on since winning the Rumble and all that, even though now she's getting a little flat, but her now this feud with Asuka is getting interesting. So, hopefully, they continue that. And there's the seeds, you know, with Shayna Baszler planted, you know, that might still happen. Well, not anymore this year, but at least, you know, the start of it happened this year. So, yeah. Becky Lynch is one for me for honorable mention. Um, Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. Is another one. Got, yeah, she got a great year. I mean, she held the NXT Championship for the home was a whole year, I think. Yeah, and that's what she, I mean. She just dropped the title to Rhea Rapley like uh, like a week ago. 
but I mean, she remained, you know, really good heel. Great matches also, and he defeated almost the whole roster. Yeah, she. I was gonna say she's literally the female Adam Cole in the sense where yeah. she was the workhorse. She she wasn't a, like a champion that only wrestled like a Brock Lesnar. She wrestled all the time. I mean, yeah, she did the heel moves. She had Jessamine Duke, Marina Shafir come out and help her in certain matches. So like with Io Shirai and the cage match and all that. But you know, she was still like you can't deny anything that the woman does in her promo work is super legit. Yeah. And for example, you know, like you said, she went through the whole roster. She mm -hmm. went against Candice. She went against Io. She went against um, Kari Sane at that time. Yep. Bianca Belair, Mia yep. Yim. Every single woman that had, you know, yep. a, a place in the women's division, she went through all of them. The only one that had to, like, the one left was the one that took away the championship from her. And this is the case of Rhea Rappley. But the woman was able to remain a great heel in great prom promo work. And also, like, she has improved from when she started to the wrestler that she is now. She's mm -hmm. absolutely great. Oh, yeah. And Each match all... she wrestles, she gets better and better. Exactly. And, you know, all we can see from her is really great things. Once she moves to the main roster, hopefully they keep her character the way it is. And, of course, we, we have said this about this rumor that she might be headlining WrestleMania with Becky Lynch in case no. Ronda Rousey doesn't come back. Yeah, a ma that match would be legit. I have a dark horse match, which you really got to book it. And this might be a stretch. People might not like this as much as I do, but you could have Asuka beat Becky at the Royal Rumble, and then you could have Becky or uh, Asuka versus Shayna, and if they could, their feud could be like, well, one, she wants the Raw Women's Championship, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you could have it where Asuka was like, you know, they, they fight for who was the more dominant NXT champion like who was the best now we can prove it we're both on the main roster we'll prove who was is the most dominant woman and yeah, then and that then you could cool. have you, you could have Shayna go over she could beat Asuka and then you could have Becky chase because I was like when the baby face chases the heel yeah it will be a lot yeah. better than the heel going after the face and yeah. like you said Becky great year she accomplished what she wanted for the longest time she mm -hmm. became Becky two belts she was the main event at the WrestleMania. She won the championships. After that, though, that's when the debacle became because she was portraying like a really crappy feud with Lacey Evans, the crappy storylines with Seth Rollins and all of that, SummerSlam with Natalia, and like a decent match, but that's all there yeah, was to it. That's, yeah, and, and there, well, the match with Sasha was legit at Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell with Sasha was good. But then, uh, once, and then the triple threat of the Survivor Series. Yeah, and the only was, good thing from that was, like, the hype. It was the hype, exactly. And then, uh, well, the plan, the seeds were planted for Shayna and Becky Lynch. So the whole run has been good up to WrestleMania. But when she actually became champion, I think her uh, excitement and... You oh, know, yeah, de getting definitely. That, that's why... Down a lot. Yeah, that, that's why I definitely didn't pick her to be my choice but so our both of our choices yep, are take it take it take us through oh well drum drum set again winner and female of the year robrick awards 2019 is that's a blancher how yeah how, can you not, yeah how can you not yeah can you this woman has been making a remarkable history has been breaking Barriers for men, for women, I'm, I'm sorry, for women. She's been actually doing something that no other female has been done, has, has been doing, you know, in wrestling itself. She's yeah. been, she's going to challenge Sammy Callahan for the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. And the woman, she has a really great moveset. And she goes, and now she's not even part of the females division. She goes yeah, against men. Yeah, because that's how legit she is. She goes against men. She went to. She fought the gauntlet match for the number one contender against Brian Cage. She delivered a great match, and the feud with Sammy Callahan is already almost two years in the making. Because they had a previous match before, for not, not, yeah. the title wasn't involved on that. But now they put the title on that in a hard to kill. It's just magic. That's a, yeah, and and it's like, but and it's believable. Like everybody wants her to win. 
Exactly. She, that's how believable and legit she is. It's not like, oh, here's just this story and Sammy Callahan's going to kick her ass. And it's like, oh, okay, no, whatever. It's like, no, everyone's behind her. And it's like, no, she's going to win. That's, you know, that's what we want. And that hopefully, you know, impact delivers. And it's like, that would elevate her to be, you know, the, probably the greatest woman's wrestler, you know, oh, at well, least right. Yeah, I would say, you could say of all time. If somebody well, says that, you know, it's that's hard to argue. It is, it is, it will be. Again, breakthrough thing. It will be something remarkable. It will mm. be groundbreaking. And also, it would be smart for Impact because just think of how newsworthy that would be, and, and all the eyes, I mean. and that would because bring a lot of eyes into your promotion. Exactly. The last time that a woman was about to challenge for a world heavyweight championship hold, hold by men, it was China. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, SummerSlam 1999, and that's when she was about to. The original plans was for China to become number one contender. And go in that triple threat match with Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin and China was supposed to win the championship. But Vince McMahon presented her two things. Is either you want to be the champion or you want to do Playboy. And he said, well, if I'm going to be the champion, can I get still the million that Playboy is going to give me? He's like, no. So he's like, well, the woman needed money. Hey, she went for the money. And that be, went up be, to becoming the, one of the most sell numbers of Playboy of all time. So yeah, but I'm gonna say, unfortunately, yeah, no, unfortunately, yeah, if she probably she was probably hooked on drugs and would rather have the money more to use, you know. And it's like, unfortunately, I feel like you know she could have been so much more. Like Tessa Blanchard is way more legit in the ring and like her move set and everything than China, but because she can actually wrestle. But like that would have, you know, China would be remembered by so much more, or so many oh, more. Yeah, China. Well, China is the groundbreaking woman. Because yeah. she was the first one fighting men, and she did win a you know a championship. You know he was he was the she was the IC champion. Yeah, yeah. So she did. You know, China is a whole different breed. But mm-hmm. the first woman that had that opportunity presented to her was her. That's and what I mean. Now, she she could have been the first one, and that you know and now almost but... twenty years, twenty two years in the making, 22, 21 years. Tessa Blanchard has another chance of doing that, but this time actually becoming the first woman to be a heavyweight champion. You know, yeah, and not, yeah. The woman itself, you know, the way he carries herself, the way, of course, she's the daughter of Tolly Blanchard. So, of course, she has a lot of lineage. And the way that they present it to us is not as cringy as uh, Charlotte and Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. So we know, but they don't see a lot of interaction with each other. So, and that's the thing because WWE, they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to, like, handle it. Like you said, they're like, oh, we don't know what to do. So, we'll just put Ric Flair on TV like once every two months because everybody loves Ric Flair, right? It's like, no, now it gets nauseating. Now we don't want to see Ric Flair because it's the same bullshit every time. He's not special anymore when he comes out. Exactly. So now when Tessa is a lot is a lot different because yeah. she doesn't rely on Tully, on her father, exactly. to accomplish the things that she's been accomplishing. And she's the main reason that Impact is getting a lot of notoriety. Yeah, Probably it- the, the only reason. That yeah, name and, is- and and look at all the things she does for the women because I'm sure she helps all those women in that women's division. You know, Jordan Grace is another one who had a great yeah. year. Like yes. she's good friends with her, helps her out. Like that's what I mean. She's not only like challenging for this men's title, but leading you know the charge in that women's division. Just you know by making them all better just by being there. Exactly. So I feel that this woman is the MVP for the women in this year, just because all the work that she's put along. All the mm. pay-per-views that she's done on Impact, the main she's she's probably the main event player of Impact. Imagine that. Not even Sammy Callahan, not even Brian Cage, not even Rick Swan, not even when Big Papa Pom was there, not even Shamrock, not even RBD. None of these guys. It's Tessa Blanchard. Yeah, she's Killer the Cross, one that is yeah. carrying that you know, that company. A woman is carrying a company. Most people will say, Yeah, Becky Lynch is doing the same thing. Well, you know, you're forgetting about a guy named Roman Reigns when it comes to that. But when it comes to Impact, I think Tessa is the number one talent that is holding that company in the way that they're doing it right now. Oh, so, absolutely. Those are the reasons that we, you and me tied on that. So mm-hmm. let's move on to the next category, Jean Paul. Now we have the tag teams. And if anybody listens, you know, watches and picks up on what I say, my choice was an obvious one. I had to go with the Lucha Bros. Lucha and Bros. Just, yeah, and just everything that they've done, you know, but even before coming to AEW this year and AAA and everything, you know, and just Pentagon. And, you know, these guys are just 
two incredible can be single stars on their own. And then in the tag team, it, they're just like, they're so smooth. They're, it's just like flowing water. Like their moves, it's, it's not like one guy is waiting for another guy like set up. Like one hits the ropes and the other one does the tag team move. And they just like their moves are so smooth, so legit. And, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a mark for them. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I love it them. Is. It is what and, it and, is. And, and, like, they're one of those guys, and they're a team. Like I said, they're so legit, but they can go to any promotion, and that's that's who you build your tag team division around. And they can play the heel, they can play the face, and the crowd loves it either way. And that's what I mean. Like, you can't – there's no way you can mess up a tag team like the Lucha Bros. Oh, and yeah. And they put in, like, work. They, you know, they – like and like all these guys, pretty much everyone who we have on this list has put their body through hell, you know, not just this year but every year. To get yeah. where they are, to you know, be awarded the the precious honor of being the rope break, you know, mm-hmm. the top. Yeah, you you, know, you won the rope break awards. You yeah, know, yeah. you want to you want to have that yeah. distinction. Yeah, it's you don't want AEW's tag team belt, but this is what you want. But you know, the the Lucha Bros are definitely my pick, and you know, they're one of those teams that I feel it's hard to argue. It is very difficult to do that, and before I want to say though, before this year. I didn't know how good Ray Phoenix was. I did not know him, you know, his lucha mm-hmm. style. I knew Pentagon because of Impact. I knew he Pentagon was an Impact heavyweight champion, but I did not know how Ray Phoenix was. I didn't know. I didn't know how good of a wrestler he is. Yeah, and the combination of both of them, like you're saying, those two are just so good together. Like they they are in sync. Mm-hmm. Everything that they do like flows so well. Yeah, like I feel like those guys, they could just yell a move out and they could close their eyes and they could do the move with their eyes closed. Yeah, yeah. and you know, the rivalries that they had, Santana and Ortiz on Impact. Mm-hmm. And that was great. That was, a, you know, that was another thing that made Impact great. It was that rivalry, having the Lucha Bros. They go to AEW now and they have the matches with the Bucks. A series of matches, extremely great. The match with Private Party and AEW Dynamite. These guys, the amount of work, and especially that match on its own, the pace of that match, you know that that match was Mm -hmm. so quick, and they were able to keep up with that. Yeah, like the ladder match, just everything. Like, you stay just, the guys are like, they're shot out of a cannon at 200 miles an hour, and they keep that pace for 17, 18, you know, 23 minutes, and then, and they don't care who it is. It's like, yeah. They keep going and going, and they deliver the mess matches in the car of all, you know, always. In any any car that they are, exactly. so the Lucha Bros. I I think from your perspective, I think they're the best tag team of the year. Though I think that they are well, I I like Penta, you know, and Ray yeah. Phoenix. I I have grown to respect and appreciate Ray Phoenix's work so much, just because, like I said, like before, like before you got me into Lucha Bros. I was like, okay, I knew Penta. Penta legit. He mm-hmm. had the match with Omega and All In and all of that. I I, I know who he is. But Ray Phoenix, the way, like, again, his moveset is, you know, just completely out of this world. Oh, and yeah. also the execution, how flawless every time that he executes a move, you know, that's something that, to me, Ray Phoenix, if he, like you said, if he will want to be a singles guy, he could be the, the world champion of any promotion of his choosing. Oh, yeah. And I love Cerro Miedo. Yep. You know, I love, of course, I got to support my La Familia. I got to support La Raza. So I'm always a fan. But for me, they're not the best tag team of 2019. Who are you going with? Let's hear for it. Me, drum, drum. We have Undisputed Era. Mm-mm, Bobby mm-mm, Fish mm-mm, and mm-mm. Kyle O'Reilly. I know. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I gotta. I I feel that the Undisputed Era as a tag team, they have no other contender. They oh, have. Yeah. They had the best matches. They were able to remain a tag. You know, they keep the staple going. And in the end of the year, they're still the NXT champions. Great showing. And, yeah, and, and you, you, can't, you can't argue. That's, you know, any the whole NXT as a group, they are the best thing. You could say that they were the best thing in wrestling of 2019. Yes. And Undisputed Era, everything, they're smaller guys. But even when they wrestle the Viking Raiders, you know, bigger opponents and everything like that. They just come off so legit, so believable, you know, and you're just the promo, like, you know, Bobby Fish, you know, Kyle O'Reilly, you know, Kyle is a little bit better, but, you know. Kyle O'Reilly is the best, yeah, the best yeah. out of the two, yes. Yeah. Yes. But, 
of course, you know, the, the match with the Revival in mm-hmm. the build-up for the Survivor Series. Wasn't it great? Yeah, yeah legit match. Legit match. Ladder yeah. match, NXT TakeOver 25 with the uh, Street Profits. They lost, but in the end, who put, you know, who was the MVP? Who put that match together? What made that match legit? And the Spirit of Error. Exactly. You know, I mean, the, and even the match at Survivor Series wasn't, you know, it wasn't bad. Exactly. So, great match. Why? Because the Undisputed Era is right there. And that's what Fish I mean. and O'Reilly, and also sometimes Roderick Strong. That's mm-hmm. another thing. If they play the Freebird, they always, you know, they're all like a good gel. They're all together. That, for example, if I take the one out, the other one comes in and steals the same, you know, the same team, the same yeah, exactly. flawless execution of moves, the same. Uh, um, you see, like the tags, and you see the same synchrony. Everything, everything is great with the undisputed era, and the fact that they're still remaining a main event players in the NXT. That's why, for me, that's my choose. That's oh, my yeah, pick. yeah. The, the past what three, four years, undisputed era has <laughs> been the most legit thing in NXT. So the past, yeah, three yeah. years, I would say, undisputed era. Adam Cole, you know, they help out. They tried to help him out on NXT. Take over New York to make to win the championship. They weren't successful, but to me, it's just the whole group of guys that they can all tag in, and they're all there for each other. If there's something going on, then boom, you know, they you can always like relay on your brothers, and that's why. And you don't see any cracks in between mm-hmm. any of them, so you know the group is still going strong. And like you said, Kylie Riley, great wrestler. She he has a lot of a past with Japan, good friends with AJ Styles, Adam Cole. Bobby Fish is what I will say, you know, kind of like the least popular of all of them, but also he's a great wrestler. And mm. like you said, and we, we discussed this throughout this whole year when they did war games. And this period there, they've been in all the war games matches. Yeah, that's what I mean. Be in the main event of Wars Collide against Imperium. And that's going to be a legit match. Exactly. And why? Because the Undisputed Era is the best tag team. Yeah, they're like so, Jericho. Everything they touch is just gold. Might as like them. Yeah, it's like yeah. them. It's like, boom. Mm, 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 mm. So, Jean-Paul, moving along. Next category, please. And moving along, we have the best match of the year. So, my best match was from the debut of Jean-Paul Leck. From, from TakeOver Cardiff, you had Tyler Bate versus Walter. And it's like that was a the match was so first of all the length of the match I appreciated because one it was for the heavyweight championship yes. and just it wasn't bore, like it was a slower match in the sense where it was like the British style you know the holds the submissions wear downs for some of the match but then they picked it up and just Tyler Bate is such an unbelievable athlete for like his size to, all the moves everything he was doing to Walter and. You know, Walter is, you think, oh, what is he, an Andre the Giant? Like, what can he do? He's so athletic for everything he can do for his size. And it was just such a legit match. The story oh, yeah. told, you know, you were really pulling for Tyler Bate to, you know, to win. But Well, the match itself, it was so good because you, you can see the first length of the match, mm-hmm. Walter was completely dominating. You know, getting Tyler Bate in every single try that he had to get at any offense, Walter will counter Walter will just put him, you know, in like really hard, like chops, punches. And you could see he was trying to weaken and weaken and weaken Tyler Bate more and more until there was like a tiny gap where Tyler Bate starts making his comeback. And for a split second, we thought that Tyler Bate was going to be able to beat Walter because yep. the whole comeback was like a good 10 minutes. And there were so many near falls. And the yeah, that's what I mean. It was just such, that's what I mean. It was just such, and because this, like you said, it it told that story, and it was just emotional. Like you, we, you thought, like, oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna slay the giant, and it's like, nope. But, oh no, no. Uh, in the end of the day, of course, Walter remains champion. But you know, those whole ten minutes for me, what I took from that match, those whole ten minutes that you, everybody was shooting for Tyler Bate. <laughs> Tyler and Bate. That, and, and Even that's another him. person. I mean, Tyler Bate, too, but especially Walter. He's another one who you could say for wrestler of the year. Yeah, that you was. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, yeah, Walter, He was legit, he's legit, but that was my pick for that match just because, you know, I, like I'm. there's matches in New Japan, too, but I, you know, just this match for me is the one that I would, I'd go with. Yeah, like, Tom, for me, like, the match itself was so good, and uh, that was the week of also all out. Mm. And... The best way for them to counter that was with this type of a match. 
You know, oh, everybody yeah. was talking about Cesaro and uh, the Russian guy. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, yeah, put, yeah, Dragonov or something. Dragonov, yeah, 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 Dragonov. And you put the and then you put this as the main event. Tyler Bate and Walter. On paper, it looked okay. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's gonna be a squash match. It's not gonna last. Those two. Tyler Bate went with everything. Mm -hmm. Everything in his moveset, he was able to hit. He hit it flawlessly. It should have been done. Well, they, the prob they, pro they probably they probably told those guys just go out there and tear the fucking house down. Yeah, and they're like, like, okay, and they're like, we we we'll keep the cameras running as long as you guys want to wrestle. Exactly. When it's, you know, when it's done, them, it's done. They gave them freedom, leeway. Is not. They say, guys, you know, this is your moment. Mm -hmm. Go become a super. You know, go go become a superstar right now. Tear the house down, and that's what they did. So for me, exactly. I I loved your pick, despite not being my pick. Because Your which pick one is, is my pick? My one. pick is Adam it's Cole, Johnny Gargano, two out of three falls, NXT TakeOver New York. John Paul was about to say it. I'm sorry that I took nope, the word out of your mouth. But I'm so excited to talk about that match. Do it. Because I happen to be there. And, you know, the whole crap, it was just beautiful. You know, that's why... That's the reason I became a professional wrestling fan. That's what it became my passion for moments like that. You know, the first two falls are, are kind of crappy. I have to say that. You know, the, the match didn't pick up all the way to like the last 15 minutes. But those two guys hit with everything that they had. And more or not, you know, you, need, you said that like for a good pay-per-view or for a good match to become even, you know, a bigger thing than what it's supposed to be, you need a great commentary. You had that. More mm. or not. In oh one of God, his yeah. best calling, you know, calling matches work, I will say mm -hmm. that one. You had Johnny Gargano, the greatest story, the you know, the the biggest underdog of all professional wrestling. You know, remember he was supposed to win the championship, you know, the year uh, a year before that uh, with Andrade Cien Almas in NXT Takeover Philadelphia. Yeah, that was one a of the greatest match. match. Exactly, one of the greatest matches of all time. He falls short. Yeah, and then he has this opportunity because, of course, Champa gets injured, so they have to vacate the title because champion uh, Champa goes away for injury, and then Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano. You know, first time that we've seen those two go at it, two out of three falls. The third fall is just beauty of its own. Panama City or Panama Sunrise, yeah. like you know, we like to say it. Super kick after super kick, both of them went at each other. Near fall after near fall. Gargano tried the Gargano escape. Adam Cole countered. Last shot to Gargano. The Undisputed Era comes out. Gargano kicks out. Last shot, Gargano kicks out. And in the end of the day, in, like I said, one of the most dramatic, and like you like to call the story, and this time it ended in the most climatic way. When everybody wanted the match to end, Gargano comes becomes the NXT champion. He beats Adam Cole. He makes... Uh, Adam Cole submit with a Gargano escape, and we finally have Gargano as the champion. It took him like what three years in the making for that. So that's yeah. own. It was beautiful, you know. It was. It was, and then it, it was like, like you said, be, I'm sure being there and all that. That moment, it was so everything. It was legit. Unfortunately, then just everything that happened afterwards is very short title reign. You yeah, know, kind of, kind of bullshit. But just yeah. that moment. But, I mean, that just plays into his underdog character. Yes, exactly. But like you said, you know, there's that moment, you know. It, it, it yeah. was legit. And, it, like, there's no, like, that's the thing. Like, that first match, it had all that emotion, but it didn't give it to us. We, the heel was still the conqueror and still won. But your match, it gave us all that, but, you know, we got what we wanted. It gave us the happy ending. Exactly. And, and you know, like Candice yeah. came out. Champa comes out despite being injured yeah. yet, and then they hug, DIY, you know, all of the reformation, maybe, you know. And I think that the, the crowd, rea the crowd's reaction from that match and the whole pay per view on its own, I will say it was great. You know, we all left with a smile on our faces, not too much myself, just because I love Adam Cole more than Johnny, but to see, you know, the ultimate story being finally uh. fulfilled. You know, see the guy who was like, because I, I was always rooting for Almas when they fought at Philadelphia. But mm -hmm. now I'm like, okay, let's have the guy that's in the title. He deserves yeah. it. He's good. But like you said, like he had a really short title reign. And now he's changed him back after the title. And now he's going to be feuding with Finn Balor. But I would say as an honorable mention, I would say Johnny Gargano. 
also like a uh, for superstar male superstar of the year. Great year. He finally oh, became yeah. the champion, and you know the Johnny Johnny take over every time that he's on the main event match, and not even in the main event. Any time that he's fighting, you know it's going to be a great showing. So that one for me is the best match of the year. If you guys you know likes John Pauls or myself, you know you can go to WWE Network. Thank you WWE. Mm -hmm. Where is the royalties for that? But go and see those matches because if you're not a wrestling fan, those kind of matches will make you be a wrestling fan. Oh my god, yeah, that's like the same thing, like a Undertaker, you know, Shawn so Michaels. Fine. Yeah, yep. it's a match that like you you get emotionally invested. In that's the, in the word. Yeah, that's the word. You get emotionally invested, and that's what Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano did that night. So, John Paul, what is the next category, please? Then moving on, we have the pay per view of the year, and I went with of course NXT Takeover New York. There you go. So yeah, so just you know, like all the match. I mean, like any NXT takeover, you know, it's a legit show. You know, you're not gonna watch it and be like, "So this was all right." So, you know, you're gonna watch it and you're gonna be like, "No, this was a fucking badass, legit show." And but like, I don't know, just takeover New York. You know, it was just like it was more special. Like all the matches on it were just so legit. And you know, you had the the Viking Raider or the the War Raiders. Against Alistair Black and uh, Ricochet. And Ricochet, yeah. Yep. And that and was that, a great match. It, you know, when, when both of those guys were portrayed legit. Yeah. You know, they weren't, yeah. like, hiding in a closet and pretending to be a superhero. And yet, Velveteen Dream, Matt Riddle, legit match. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you're a big fan of Matt Riddle, so. Yep. He got bro. a great showing in that match. Great showing. And then you Walter, of course, Pete Dunne. So then that's where the reign of terror began. The reign of Walter. Yeah. That's when he became the NXT UK champion, yeah. That and was... then, and then the, f the fatal four way was Shayna Baszler, you know, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, Bianca Belair. Like I said, and everything we said about Shayna, you know, this is one of those matches where she, you know, she beat those women. She already beat Kyrie, and you know, she would beat Io, and then you know, beat Bianca, you know, submit her here. So it's like, you know, she exactly. just runs, that was she a, runs that was a everybody. Match. Yeah, yeah and, and for example, you know, the four. Best women in that roster. They were right there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the uh, beautiful Fatal 4-Way. But at the end, when it's all said and done, who came out as champion? Shayna Baszler. She retained her title. Yeah. And it, and that's what I mean. Like, all these matches, you know, are just legit. Like, none of them is just like, oh, okay, this is a bathroom break. Like, you don't get up during any of these. You no. just, when you want to watch them, you don't check your phone. You don't care. And yeah. then, of course, we get to the main event. We just talked about it. What more do we need to say? Johnny Gargano defeats Adam Cole. Two out of three falls match. Yeah. This whole pay-per-view was so good. Just because, like you said, the amount of quality of wrestling happened to be WrestleMania weekend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the match of the War Raiders with Ricochet and Aleister Black is probably one of the best tag team matches of all time. Well, Ricochet yeah, tell and Aleister Black. Great. Tell me it. Tell me a match on this card that couldn't main event any pay-per-view in any promotion. That's what I mean. But yeah, they're That's all so I mean. legit. Yeah, because for me, Matt Riddle, to see him li you know, live, this guy is such a great wrestler. I might not be a, home, a huge fan of the gimmick, but the guy is legit and legit only. This mm -hmm. guy put the Velveteen Dream to hell. You know, knees, you know, like, like his submission holds. He's able to, like, what I like is, like, his versatility. Of going to, you know, like technical to just like be MMA. And uh, of course, the Velveteen Dream won when it was the, the end of the match, but he put him through hell. You could oh see the God. dream like he was so tired, so exhausted because Matt Riddle was able to put, you know, him through so, so much pain and so much, you know, to fight for to get his championship yet. And moving along to like Walter and Pete Dunn, Pete Dunn has, was the champion for like almost a year and a half or so. Before this match, and to have a guy like Walter, to have a match that they, the kind of match that they had, you know, like there were so many like uh, springboard moves, superplexes, and all of that. And but it was all said and done. Once again, Walter becomes the champion, and they did the right thing. It was it was the time for a new champion, and Walter. I mean, he's the champion right now. And just the, how legit has that title been portrayed? Yeah. It's not like a boom, 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 bouncing around between like 30 different champions. Oh, no. You know? Not at all. Not at all. So that's so like, I, like that. Yeah, they, they, they do it correctly. Like, you know, like you said Pete Dunn was holding that belt forever. It's like, all right, it's time for a change. 
And it's like, who do you, you want him to still look strong? So you make him, you, he loses it to the monster, you know? Like, yeah. Like, cause who's going to beat Walter? You know, I don't know what that story, like what they're building, but I don't For see example, it anytime soon. Yeah. I remember like you talking about this, you know, when we did the Cardiff in the, in the yeah. debut of Jean-Paul Egg, who can beat Walter? And we were saying maybe McIntyre, maybe Cesaro, but we couldn't come up with like a name that like will be like a name. So, yeah, this guy can beat him. Mm -hmm. still well, I, mean, I, I would definitely say him and McIntyre because, you know, unfortunately they jobbed Walter out at the Survivor Series, Claymore kick and done. Yeah. Which was fucking bullshit. Yeah. But, you know, that's the thing. So it's like, I would definitely say that Drew McIntyre could beat him. But, you know, I don't think Drew McIntyre is going to go to NXT UK. Yeah, I think he's going to be, hopefully, this year, 2020, is the year of Drew McIntyre, because that was 2019 was supposed to be the year of Drew McIntyre. So hopefully they just, wait, they just waited one more year to make McIntyre look legit. Mm -hmm. but, I like you so. said. Yeah, Walter, and then, of course, Adam Cole and Gargano. Great, great, great match. We already talked about it, so I'm going to tell you my pick tell for us. the best pay-per-view of 2019, and now I'm going to let you say it for me. All right, so I will tell us. Juan's pay-per-view of the year was Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing, baby. You know, AW first pay-per-view, you know, um, that uh, with, a, with a TV deal announced, it was the first, um, you know, showing of the whole roster before the TV, the TV show went on the air. So I was, it was, it was really impressed. Everything was good. And, you know, the whole vibe after when the pay-per-view goes off the air, it was absolutely like, okay, this seems like change. People mm -hmm. were excited about it. Finally, oh my there's God, yeah. an alternative. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, people. like you said, it didn't just go off with a happy ending. Like, oh, okay, you know, Moxley comes out. It's like, oh, shit. And then it's like, you know, th it's like, this is what we want to see. This is like, this feels legit. This feels like, you know, it feels as real as it can. And, you know, we want more. Yeah. And that's the thing. It wasn't like, oh, you know, they they didn't debut like next week. We had to wait. And it's like, oh, but we want the show. We want to see what's happening. And it's like, that's how you get people. You build the anticipation and like everything about that show from top to bottom. You know, some things, you know, women's matches was, eh, you know, here or there. But like the show was just legit. It was definitely they hit a home run for sure. I agree with you. Like the whole show was like really, really good. We get like a beautiful match between Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes or Goldust. Oh, yeah. Just the brother exactly, yeah. brother. Great storyline. You know, you love that feud. Mm -hmm. you enjoy that feud you know the match was really good Goldust gets busted open or Dustin Rhodes gets busted open the match was really gory blood going everywhere in the end of the day Goldie was about to win but Cody of course he hits the crossroads and done but the whole match the story that they told absolutely great Oh, and yeah. of course, they stopped hugging and they went back oh it was legit friends. yeah and that's the thing if you if you watch it and you didn't feel like like, you know, a little bit emotional, like, oh, this is legit, like, this is badass, you know, tugging on the heartstrings, you know, then you're dead inside. Because, I mean, it was it was an awesome match. Exactly. The, story, the story was there. The story, the story was better was... than the match, I would say. Yeah. The match, the... And the match wasn't bad, but the story was just so good. Yeah, and, you know, for the fact that, like, Goldas was able to still put good matches like this at his mm -hmm. age, and Cody for, to be able to help him to deliver this type of match, to me, that was really great. And on yeah, top of that, I agree. we get... You're the best tag team pick for you, the Lucha Bros, going against the Young Bucks. That was, you know, just carnage yeah, on its and, own. And, and the one thing I, I just want to say here, too, the Young Bucks are definitely a tag team. The Young Bucks have been a tag team for the year candidate, and they would deserve it on any list for the past five years. So I just want to say the Young Bucks are definitely an honorable mention, but I had to go with the Lucha Bros. Well, as yeah, you did, yeah. as you did Undisputed there. I just want to mention that before people are like, what about the Young Bucks? Just... Exactly. But the, yeah, I mean, but this match, like every match that they had, you know, whether it's here or AAA or, or you know, any indie promotion, wherever they're going, it, this is a must-see match. Yeah, like, the, you know, those two teams throwing the house down. Mm -hmm. You know, springboard after springboard, the, the amount of, like, moves that they go along, the sequences, all of that, and the, how flawless they all came out is so great. You know, and... Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably, again, you, know, you could say at that time, also, that was candidate for one of the best matches, you know, tag team matches of this year of all time. Because oh, you yeah. see the amount of work that they put and the pace of that. I, I will keep reiterating that. The pace of those matches are so different from a regular tag team match. Mm -hmm. And they still are able to put out a great, great showing. 
is all the respect for those two teams. And like you said, Bucks have been one, of the, if not the best tag team of like the past five, six years. But like the Lucha Bros, I think it was this year of the consolidation for mm -hmm. them. Because now they're becoming a household name, like you said. It's not only like the people that impact, it's the one that knows them. Now they're on mainstream TV with AEW and everything. Now everybody knows who Pentagon is, Ray Phoenix. And they are starting to get more momentum. I think that like that was your choice for like the tag team championships. Oh, but yeah. unfortunately, they had to put the titles on SEU. I still don't understand that idea quite well. But those two teams helped, you know, to give this pay-per-view the relevance that it needed. And then the pay-per-view was closes with like another feud that was extremely great, which was Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. Exactly, that, and that's yeah, and that's and this was you know the 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 birth. And he didn't obviously there was no belt, no title, but this was you know the birth, the the seeds being planted and being watered of Le Champion and how in your pick for the wrestler of the year. That's what I mean. Great match, not as great as like the one that they had at Wrestle Kingdom, like the year before that, mm -hmm. but. You know, extremely good. And, of course, he debuted the Judas Effect. I did not like the finish. But Le Champion, like you said, Le Champion starts to get momentum. And then, of course, when people, like, were rumors, oh, Moxley might be there, Moxley might be there. Boom. John Moxley is there. Yep. He starts, like, taunting Jericho. Um, He does the dirty deeds on Jericho. And then he goes up to yeah, Kenny because, Omega. Because who did everybody want? Like, if, we, if we're going to go back, everybody wanted CM Punk. Yes. But that, that's like, that's, you know, that's like saying you want... You want like the Red Ranger, you want the Red Power Ranger toy, but if your mom would buy you not the Red Ranger, but she would buy you the Black Ranger and the Blue Ranger, that would also be cool. Yeah. That's what that's what would happen. That's what John Moxley was. Like everybody wanted CM Punk, but we got John Moxley and it was still badass. Oh yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like and I, I personally like Mox. I think he fits more. And fits like that rough kind of like, like I don't want to say edgy, but that like rugged style that AEW is trying to portray. Like we're like tough and legit and everything. I don't know if CM Punk would fit that style too well. Yeah. So I and, think and, John you know, Moxley yeah. came out fresh because he he was being an activity. He's been active, yep. you know, this whole year. Whereas I see him Punk, we don't know. And yeah, the one exactly. thing that like Moxley has over Punk is like Moxley will be there every single week. While mm -hmm. Punk will be there just, you know, like, he'll become, like, a Brock Lesnar, like, a Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Just, like, and, and that's, selective that, yeah. that So, like, for me, it was better that it was Moxley. And, but, I, like, I know the community was, I mean, they, they're always going to want CM Punk. But yeah, now, we, well, now, we know, now we know where he is on, on uh, backstage. But. Yeah, well, we will know. But, like you said, I feel that, like, John Moxley coming to AEW, that was great. And, mm -hmm. of course, they delivered that beautiful match with Kenny Omega. Most people here thought it was too gory, it was too you know, bloody, too violent. For me, I'm in love with that match because that's the kind of wrestling I grew up watching. Mm, exactly. That's the type of wrestling that I love. That's the type of carnage that I love. And it's not because it's just violent. It's just you're telling a whole story. I'm like, yeah. like John Paul in that regard. Mm -hmm. I, I agree 100% because it's not like... Now, some people say ECW overdid it, which it's like, yeah, like looking back, you might say they didn't need to do some of the chair spots and this and that. But like even them, like they, they still wrestle. They didn't do like barbed wire and shit every single week. And AEW is not going to do barbed wire every week. So it's like, you know, like you said, the goriness, it's only when the story calls for it. And it's it's a special thing and it's done. And but, it's something that, like you said, the story yeah. needs it. So you have to give it. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, what is the one thing that we've been complaining about Hell in a Cell for the past 10 years? There's no blood. Yeah. Why you call it Hell in a Cell if there's no hell inside? Yeah, I asked for red, and then they give us the red cell and the, and the red lighting. And, of course, they give it like wanted, a terrible I wanted, landing. Red, I wanted red from here. I just wanted red right here. So, yeah. John Paul, let's finish with the last category, and that is? Well, we actually have um, two more categories here. Okay, well, let's do two. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the second to last, we have the feud of the year. Feud of the year, John Paul. Let's feud do of it. the year. So my feud of the year, we talked about a little bit before and some of our picks here, Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole. Just, you know, everything, the feud. And, and this is like when, you know, in the, the rematch part of it and everything, you know, Johnny, like challenging and, you know, trying to get the belt back. It was what... 
and Adam Cole, like just every all the promo work alone, not like their matches, of course, fantastic. Five, you know, even if there's more than five, I know Meltzer does that to me. That doesn't make sense. I think mm. it should just be five out of five. But if you could give them more than five, give them to them because they deserve it. But just the promos, you know, going to his pizza shop or his parents' pizza shop, whatever it was, Italian restaurant, shit talking him, going to the gym, shit talking him, saying like, oh, Johnny said he was fat and he lost weight and became a wrestler, but you guys will just all be fat slobs. Or he went to a school and was shit talking kids or something. It was just, it was so legit. And it's like the feud, it was just all that emotion. Like we wanted Johnny to win then. And it's like, no, you know, John, you know. That's the thing. They just kept really that underdog, and it was just—it was such a good feud. It was. I mean, the whole trilogy of mm-hmm. matches that they had: yeah. NXT New York, and then they go to NXT 25 when Adam Cole wins the championship. And like you said, the whole work after that, when he did the Adam Cole tour, the championship yep. tour throughout the nation, <coughs> bothering Gargano. Like you said, he goes to—I um, think he also went to like. His school, his wrestling school, because Gargano yeah. has a wrestling school, and the same thing, talking nonsense, and also like the match that they had at NXT Toronto, yeah. when they had like the cage match, I think it was, mm. and all of that. It was like, no, it was I think it was another two out of three. I'm not. Or, yeah, they, yeah, they like picked the stipulations, or, yes. or not, or yeah, because it was like if it goes to the second or the third fall, then. Johnny will pick, and nobody knew what it was, but like we saw the cage hanging above, so it's like, oh, okay, it's clearly exactly. going to go. Exactly. So balls. the whole trilogy yeah. means so much. And mm-hmm. these three guys, I mean, these two guys, I'm sorry, I don't know why am I adding a third person here, <laughs> but these two guys gave it all in all the three matches. And oh you God, said yeah. this feud probably has been one of the greatest feuds of the past five, six and years. And that's the thing. Imagine if, if this feud was like going on now and this is what was on usa network that's because they don't have a feud this hot on television now i don't think the champa feud is this hot it it, it could become that once they because now they're going to start building it so i think 2020 you know it has a chance to but like they, i mean this feud was so good i feel like they would be their numbers would be even be better than they are now because I... once people once people see this they'll be like oh i need to start watching this this is legit you are probably making one of the greatest points. If they would have done this, you know, on regular and NXT on USA, it would have been absolutely great. Yeah. They would be getting every single way. I think I think they're buying their time and they're waiting and they're like, come 2020 when they go full full throttle on the Champa Cole storyline, I think it'll it'll be the same thing. I but, really I really agree with you. I really but now you. we have your pick for the feud of the year. And that is and that is Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. Well, okay. and what, what's there to say about this feud? You know, this feud started like uh, towards the end of 2018 when uh, when Becky, of course, like he was the captain of Team SmackDown. Unfortunately, she was supposed to be. She was the champion. She was supposed to face Ronda. But because of Nia Jax, um, mm-hmm. we couldn't get that match. But, you know, that planted the seeds for like a whole, year, you know, six months of feud. You know, mm-hmm. the Royal Rumble is going to be the chance. The Royal Rumble is going to be the chance. How do I get these two women to face each other knowing that both of them are on different brands? Of course, Becky, lose, uh, she had to lose the championship and uh, for the SmackDown championship. They put it on Asuka. She tries to get the title back, doesn't win it, and then she wins the Royal Rumble. And, of course, she goes after Ronda, and they had, of course, this stupid storyline where they suspended Becky, they pretended the injury, and then they added Charlotte into the mix because they needed Charlotte into this. But, you know, the whole whole storyline was very, very good up to the point of Charlotte. Yeah, I, and it was, like, even when you add Charlotte, if you just kind of forgot she was there because, and, and also it would have been better if, like, you bring Charlotte into it, and I know they wanted to do the Becky two belts, but I don't know why you just didn't do like an undisputed women's championship or something. It just combine, been just co- combine the two belts and then it's like, boom, legit. I know Becky two belts is like a marketing ploy and they want to put that on T-shirts and posters and sell it to make money. But you could have did the same thing and had a unification for the title. And like a lot of people say, you know, merge the divisions because your women's division on each show is made of four women. So combining them would only be eight women, which still yeah. isn't even a division. NXT yes. has a bigger women's division, and even though the main roster has like 30 women, they just don't do anything with them. 
And that's what I so, mean. You're, you're absolutely so, yeah, right. You, and, but, but with all that being said, the, the feud, it was still legit. You know, again, like if you take Charlotte out of it, it's just like a, it was legit. You know, their promos, everything back and forth, like on Twitter, all their like their shit talking back and forth. And the arm bar versus arm bar, you know, just like everything. It was it was so legit. In, yeah, it made it for like, it made it to the point that it ended up like uh, main event in WrestleMania. Yeah, and, and I would, and I would, I would agree with you on that. If one, because to me, Ronda was legit. Ronda had the good match with Kurt Angle, you know, the debut match. And then, you know, once she won the belt, who, who did she get the title from? Was it Nia Alexa Jax? Bliss. Alexa, Alexa Bliss. Bliss. Alexa, Alexa Bliss. You know, she had, like, matches with Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax, because I, I know Alexa had rematches and title, other yeah. title opportunities, and then Nia Jax, and it's like, you didn't give her, until people like Sasha Banks, you didn't give Ronda legit opponents. And yeah. it's like, so then it's like, her first, you know, one of her first legit opponents besides Sasha Banks is like Becky Lynch and Charlotte, and then she loses. So it's like, you know, like if Ronda was built up better and there wasn't the inclusion of Charlotte, like to me, I would have definitely picked this feud. But exactly. it's be- but it's because of this feud that Becky Lynch was, you know, she could she have been. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She honorable mention on the the prestigious rope break, you know, Woman of the Year award. Yeah, that, that's that's what she ended up becoming, yeah. and she will became- send her her card well, in the mail. No, well, we're gonna have the things, you know, we'll send in the award and everything. We yeah, gotta yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do we'll, that soon. We'll, yeah, but yeah, like this feud is what like made the women's division so hot to the and, point and, that like, and, on, and honestly, not to cut you off, the women's division. Just go your with your point. The women's division was helping WWE. They were riding on that. That was main eventing shows. Exactly to the point that right now the women's division has lost three or four steps, and now nobody's really caring about it. So mm-hmm. that's that's what I have on that. That's why to me that was the biggest feud and my favorite feud of 2019. Last category. Yep, now here this we time are. I last last, cat- yeah. This is it. The breakthrough star and hopefully someone who's going to be a champion or, you know, an even bigger star in 2020. So my breakthrough star. <laughs> bask, saying his name. bask in his glory, Keith Lee. Mm-hmm. And if you guys know me and you watch the show, you know Keith Lee is my boy. He's legit. The things that he can do, top row, Spanish fly, like his jackhammer, the pounce, just everything he does. Power I like, bomb. Yeah, it's power, like the spirit bomb, he's so legit. Just everything he does, a man his size shouldn't be at that, as athletic as he is and shouldn't be able to do the moves that he does. But the only reason why he can do them is because he's limitless. And oh, I, yeah? believe, I believe I bask in his glory. Oh, well, so my pick is Keith Lee because he... I don't think he's going to be a North American champion. You know, I see him maybe being a tag team champion, but definitely he's got to be the NXT champion unless they do the route, which I've been saying before, you call him up in the Royal Rumble, but then he needs to win it and it needs to come down. They need to do the same thing. They need to give us a fucking heart attack again, like with Nakamura. Mm. It needs to be Roman Reigns and Keith Lee, final two, and Keith Lee eliminates him. Oh, that would be great. That would be so legit. And then Keith Lee beats Lesnar. Because what I just saw in the rumors was that what we were saying, Velasquez and Tyson Fury, apparently neither of those two names are now, again, you know how it is. They switch it day by day, minute by minute. But Mm -hmm. apparently neither of those two guys are in the talks to win the Royal Rumble anymore. Who is it? There's no one. Oh, and they don't know yet. They don't know. Probably Roman. Probably Roman. I not. I, I think they said Ro- it's Roman and Shayna, if anybody. But yeah, um, I think that's it was my whole Roman thing. And Shayna that's and like, CM Punk. They but I would, go, I would go. Yeah, I would go with Keith Lee, and that's what I mean. Just propel him to stardom because you know, in 2019, it was. Oh, he was a guy. As soon as he got to NXT, I knew what he was capable of. But it was like, you know, what are they doing with him? They're not really doing anything. Maybe he wasn't super. I know he's not the greatest on the mic and on in promo work. He, he does his talking in the ring. Maybe he wasn't as good. Maybe he was even worse. And they were trying to work on his promo, get him better. Because when he first came to NXT, he wasn't doing too much. He was, like, losing to Matt Riddle. And, like, I wouldn't say jobbing, but he wasn't definitely being portrayed as good as he is now. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the guy has a lot of potential. 
I really feel that like this year, especially the last couple of months of the end of the year, he did amazing. His showing in the Survivor Series was absolutely great. You know, almost beating Roman Reigns. War Games was another great showing for him. The guy is absolutely over. And I hope that like if they keep portraying him yeah. the way that they have. And just the series of matches with Dijakovic. Dijakovic was absolutely good too. So hopefully 2020, if they keep portraying him the same way, it will be a great year for Kidley. My uh, breakout uh, superstar of the year yep, is. I would say, tell you, tell tell us, because I'm sick of talking. Tell us. Okay, uh, you're sick of talking, so. Yeah. <laughs> MJF from AEW. This guy is the hottest heel in all professional wrestling. The guy, you give him a microphone, and the guy will give you absolute gold. He's the rivalry that he's had with Cody Rhodes, phenomenal, and it's just the beginning. Go ahead, jump on. I was going to say, he's one of those that it's like, he rivals MJ, or he rivals Jericho with his promo work in AEW. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, MJF, you know, the fact that, like, he's able to be as good as it is on the microphone and for how young he is. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I put this on our Facebook page. There's a video of him with Rosie O'Donnell. He's, like, five years old, and he already says, my dream is going to be a professional wrestler. That's what I want to do. Yeah, how so, badass is that? Exactly. Like, he had that idea in his head from the moment that he was five. Mm. And now he made his dream come true. So that's a beautiful story that many people might not know. They might think, oh, MJF is a piece of shit. He's awful because he betrayed Cody, whatever. But the guy is going to have a wonderful 2020. Oh, my God. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> He won the, the ring for the yeah, AEW. Yeah, yeah, The dynamite diamond ring. Yeah, just the dynamite, like the story. The, ring. Like you said, the storyline with Cody. And it, and that storyline's only picking up. It's like it's already legit. But it's all, it's only going to get bigger and hotter. And that's what I mean. It's going to get bigger and hotter. And also, if he becomes the AEW champion, you're just going to see, you know, tons of great promo war from NJF. Mm -hmm. And these guys, like I said, for how young he is, this guy could be potentially one of the best heels in professional wrestling of all time. Oh, I if think, I, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think in, 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 you know, five, ten years from now, we'll be singing MJF's praise even more so than we are now. Oh, He's yeah. He's definitely one of those guys where I don't think he'll be a world champion next year or maybe the year after, maybe like a mid-card champion or something, but he's one of those guys where, he every year he's going to get so much greater and greater and greater. Like he is only scratching the surface of how great he can be. Yeah, and you know, and again, the promo work. He's a decent wrestler. I'm not saying he's a great wrestler. Oh but yeah, he's decent enough to put up a good match. But he compensates that with the promo work. Doesn't he? He, he reminds you like a a lot like like if he's a a lot cooler version than the Miz, like a way cooler version. Yes. You know what I mean? Like a more yes. cool version of The Miz. Like yes. like you took The Miz and you turned him up to like 15. Because exactly. he comes out, he's like rich, he has the scarf, he's like cocky. He's like, his promo work as a heel is super legit. He maybe isn't the best wrestler. He's he's probably better than The Miz. But, you know, he just wins you over with the promos because he's such a dick. And he just really says the shit that like pisses you off and gets under your skin. You just want to see somebody wring his neck. But then when he wins, you get pissed. But that's what makes a good heel. And that's what I mean. That's what you want to see. And yep. that's what NJF gives you. So that's my pick for the Breakthrough Star of 2019. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear. That's our list. Guys. I think that's the end of our list. Yep. That's our Robrick Awards for 2019. We want to hear your picks for Male Star of the Year, Female, Tag Team, Feud, Pay-Per-View, all of that. We want to hear all of you guys' thoughts and comments for all the awards that we've been given. If you agree with us, maybe you have a different candidate, please let us know. Any closing yep. thoughts, Jean Paul? No, I think we covered it. You know, just you know, keep checking us out, subscribing, check all our social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. We have all the links uh posted in the video description. Check us out there, follow us. You know, we post regular updates and links and stuff all the time. We're and, always we're always know, uh, and and, and we're always working. We're getting back. It's soon Monday. It's soon gonna be to start. No more holiday. Well, I guess the holiday New Year, but you know, we're starting our wrestling week and you know the holiday don't mean anything to us. We're, no, because we're, we have some we keep, keep on keeping on. We keep on, you know, we always said this. And it is our motto, you know, wrestling never stops and neither do we. 
we have a busy weekend already coming up because we have Wrestle Kingdom. Is we we have two days of great wrestling. We're gonna be covering that for the people that love New Japan Pro Wrestling. So in the name of John Paul and myself, we want to say thank you, and also we would like to say. Uh, uh,